Hello and welcome to yet another video. This is the second episode of the story, in which Naruto discovers a bracelet that allows him to wield the weapons and gear of legendary heroes while looking at the Forbidden Scroll. Naruto uses this power to become the ultimate ninja of the elemental nations. Please like and subscribe to show your support. Let's get the show started. It has been several hours since Team 8 had left Konoha and were en route to meet with Kakashi and his team to assist in the sea turned a rank mission. Naruto and the others were jumping through the trees when he had a sudden sense of foreboding and started to speed up his movements, which caught the attention of his sensei. Naruto-kun, what is the matter? Why are you speeding up all of a sudden? asked Sakura curiously. I just had this feeling that Kakashi Sensei and his team have just run into more trouble, Naruto turned to Hinata, Hinatakan, could you use your Byakugan to scout ahead? Hinata complied her family's dojitsu as veins appeared around her eyes, I sensed three genin level, one civilian level and two jounin level chakra signatures. I don't recognize the second one, Kurinai thought deeply about what she said. It must be Kakashi and his team, along with the client. So the last one must be a missing ninja, then it's best that we hurry to provide backup, said Anko. Then I'm going on ahead while you girls catch up with me, Naruto took off at a higher speed with Sakura calling after him. Naruto wait. We don't know who we're dealing with. Then we'll just have to find out when we get there. Naruto called back as he went farther away from them with Tora holding on to his hoodie. Naratosuma. I'd advise that you engage this opponent with caution. This one seems to be stronger than the ones reported before, said Chinami. Don't worry about it, I'm sure to be careful, thought Naruto, Kurama wasn't convinced. When you say things like that, it's what makes us worry the most Naruto-kun, Kurama's eyes widened at what it said before turning away, Chinami gave the fox a look as if saying the fox will soon come out of the bag. That's the second time you've called me that, but we'll talk later after helping out the others, thought Naruto as he picked up the pace. Kakashi wasn't expecting the situation to escalate since the encounter with the demon brothers, Gozu and Meizu. They found out about the poverty in the land of waves because of a business tyrant by the name Gato and decided to carry on with the mission after calling for backup. Along the way, he was thinking of the blonde Genin whom he had protected back when he was in the ANBU. He knew that the boy was the son of his sensei and had wanted to adopt him if not for the civilian council stopping him from doing so. If not for that damn civilian council, who would have taken care of Naruto just like Minato Sensei would have wanted, thought Kakashi. Then they had the encounter with Zabuza Momochi, a missing ninja from Kirigakure and one of the swordsmen of the mist. He wielded a Zambito by the name of Kobikuribocho. He was hired by Gato to kill Tazuna in order to prevent him from completing the bridge. Kakashi engaged the rogue ninja but ended up getting captured in his water prison Jutsu and Zabuza created a water clone to attack his students. Kakashi tried to get them to run away but Sasuke pointed out that if they run away, it would make it easier for Zabuza to kill them. Sasuke and Kiba tried to fight back with Shino staying behind to defend the bridge builder but Zabuza's clone proved to be just as powerful as the original he landed a punch on Kiba which sent him slamming into a tree and losing consciousness. Sasuke performed a grand fireball jutsu to free Kakashi but it was countered by Zabuza's water dragon, cancelling each other out. Before Sasuke could react, the clone rushed in and delivered a punch to the gut, causing him to vomit blood and fall to his knees. I'm impressed that a genin like you could use a jutsu like that at your age but you're still green to the life of being a shinobi, said Zabuza, his clone raised his sword above Sasuke, ready to bring it down on the genin. Shino was about to go and assist his fellow teammate, when he saw someone blur by him and caught a trace of yellow hair. Damn it, is this how my life ends? I still haven't killed my brother to avenge my clan. Sasuke closed his eyes as the brought down the blade, expecting to be struck down by the missing ninja. Instead he heard footsteps from behind him and then a clang of metal. Hey team, are you alright? Hearing a familiar voice, 
Sasuke opened his eyes to look up and see a boy with yellow hair and is currently wielding a long blade which is being used to block the clone Zambatu. Hey, are you going to respond or has fear stolen your voice? Recognizing the voice, Sasuke shook himself from his stupor and glared at Naruto. Shut up Dobe, and what are you doing here? Well Gigi sent my team and I to serve as your backup, and just in time too, Naruto was still struggling to hold back the large blade when Anko and the rest of his team finally arrived. Channeling Chakra into his arms, Naruto pushed the clone sword away before grabbing Sasuke and running back to his team, Sekuriken, Hinatakan, please take care of him while I cross swords with the eyebrow-less guy holding the big fat sword, Narutakun wait. This isn't any average missing ninja. This is Zabuza, the demon of the mist. You can't possibly think of fighting him on your own. Anko tried to reason with the blonde. I've heard about him, and that is why I want to find out how I stack up with him. Beside if I get into trouble, then you can back me up, Naruto walked towards Zabuza with Tsukiyatoshi drawn from its sheath. What can a little brat like you do that your sensei can't? Zabuza taunted, thinking that the boy was all talk as his clone ran in to attack. I think you forgot one of the most important rules of battle, Naruto raised his blade to guard against the horizontal slash from the clone which sent him skidding back a few meters, then jumped into the air spinning with his blade before diving at the clone. It smirked behind its mask and raised his sword to block the strike, thinking it would do nothing. That smirk quickly disappeared when Naruto's blade cut right through the blade and the clone, forcing it to disappear in a puddle of water much to everybody's surprise, especially Zabuza. How is that possible? Kobikuribocho isn't a sword that one can break so easily, the missing ninja was in denial at what he just witnessed. How did he do that and where did he get those swords? I've never seen him with them until the day we were recruited into teams Sasuke looked at the display of his swordsmanship. Naruto smirked at Zabuza as he held the blade in the Oboro stance, you forgot to never underestimate your opponent no matter what, and there is nothing that a Muramesa blade cannot cut. What? That's impossible, one cannot wield those blades without falling into madness from the curse. As much as I want to keep this conversation going, I need work on getting my sensei free from your water prison. So without much further ado, secret arts, arc. Naruto swung Tsukiyatoshi, releasing a spinning crescent-shaped wave at Zabuza. The missing ninja quickly leapt above the attack at the last second before sneering at the blonde, even with the sword, you're still a newbie fresh from the academy, however Naruto smirked back at him, I wouldn't be saying if I were you, especially if I want to keep any of my body parts attached, Zabuza raised an invisible eyebrow. Before his honed senses warned him to move his arm just in time to avoid the spinning crescent which hand come around like a boomerang freeing Kakashi in the process. Naruto created a shadow clone that quickly grabbed the Jounin and carried him back to the group. Thanks for the save Naruto, said Kakashi who knelt next to Kurinai in exhaustion. I'm impressed with those sword techniques, but let's see if they can match up with those of the swordsmen of the mist. Zabuza dashed at Naruto with his Zambatu at the ready and soon, both were exchanging clashes with their blades. I can't believe that Naruto is able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Zabuza, said Kurinai looking at the battle in surprise with Anko along with Sakura and Hinata watching on in concern. Damn this brat is not giving me any room to counter-attack, I'd better try a different approach, thought Zabuza, he quickly jumped back and went through the hand seals before calling out, water style water dragon jutsu, a stream of water sprung from the lake, taking the shape of a dragon before launching itself at Naruto. Secret Arts, Kamataiki Naruto jumped into the wild spinning like a buzzsaw, cutting the water dragon in half. Like I said, there is nothing that Muramesa can't cut. Naruto switched out Tsukiyatoshi for Mume no Tamanu and dashed on the water, try blocking this. Secret Arts, Earth Hornet he unleashed a series of stabs at high speed, Zabuza used the broadside of his blade to block but a few were able to bypass his guard and inflict some damage on him. Who was his Kenjutsu master? To be able to get a swordsman of his caliber into this state takes. A lot of skills, said Kakashi in wonder. 
Narutakun said that his master wanted him to carry on his legacy as he was the only one to know the Oboro style, said Sakura as they continued to watch on. After clashing swords, the two fighters jumped away from each other to get some rest. Zabuza smirked at Naruto. If this is the limit of your power Gaki, then you're way out of your league, he may have said that, but Zabuza knew inwardly that there is more to this blonde ninja than meets the eye. Naruto was annoyed at being underestimated by the rogue ninja and was about to charge again, when the bracelet glowed and he had a vision of a man with spiky blonde hair while wearing an all-black outfit. With a foxy grin, Naruto returned Mumei no Tamanu back to its sheath much to everyone's confusion including Zabuza. If I'm out of my league, then it's time for me to move into the majors. Channeling chakra to the bracelet, Naruto called out, the final fantasy, there was a flash of light and when it faded, it revealed Naruto wielding a large sword almost the same size as Zabuza's but upon a closer inspection, it looked like several different swords which are combined into one. Say hello to my big friend, its previous master called it the fusion swords and I'm sure that it would want to get acquainted with yours, channeling chakra to strengthen his body in order to bear the weight of the sword dashed at Zabuza. Well let's not keep them waiting, the missing dashed in as well. Where did the dobe get that sword, shouted Sasuke with confusion and a hint of jealousy. I'm afraid we can't tell you as it's an strength secret, only the third Hokage or Naruto can tell you, said Karinai. Narutokun, please be safe, whispered Hinata with worry. Naruto wasn't finding it easy wielding the large blade in his battle against Zabuza as the latter had more experience and strength to use the Zanbatu plus was inflicted with quite a lot of damage. He quickly sidestepped a vertical slash and followed up with an upward slash which connected, but Zabuza turned into a puddle of water. Damn, it was a water clone. Then that means. Naruto immediately turned to the left and raised his sword to block an attack from the missing ninja. I'm impressed with your ability to wield a Zanbatu, but you are still green gaki, said Zabuza. I thought I told you not to underestimate me. Well here's a surprise. Naruto reached for the blade above the hilt and ejected a side blade before slashing at his stomach, leaving behind a gash for blood to flow through which forced Zabuza to jump back. Naruto resumed his attack only with more ferocity and speed while channeling more chakra than before. Narutokun, you have to end this battle quickly. Your body is already strained with the chakra you flooded it with, said Kurama with worry. Don't worry Kuramasan, I know what Naratosama is aiming for, said Chinami. The brat is finally tiring, now I can finish him. Zabuza dashed. Forward and leapt high into the air, ready to descend with a downward slash. Now's my chance. Limit break, a yellow aura radiated from Naruto, slotting the side blade back into the main sword, Naruto twirled it before positioning it behind him. Naruto, what are you doing? Get out of the way or you'll be cut in half, shouted Kurinai who was about to move in but was stopped by Kakashi, why are you stopping me? Because I can tell from here that Naruto has a plan, if not from the aura I'm seeing, then from the fact that he is quite unpredictable in any situation, said Kakashi who had known the blonde from his days in ANBU for his pranks and ability to evade experienced ninjas in the village. Zabuza came in with his attack and Naruto raised his sword to meet it, it was a stalemate for a few seconds until he continued his swing which sent Zabuza flying off before crashing into a tree much to everyone's surprise including the rogue ninja himself. Where did the brat get such strength, thought Zabuza as he laid against the tree and watched Naruto approach him. I'm sure you're wondering what happened? Receiving a nod he continued, like the name says limit break allows one to remove the safety restraints of his body to gain a burst of power but he can only do it when his body is in a critical condition. Now you have anything to say before I finish this up? Before Zabuza could say anything, he was struck in the neck by two Sunban needles. Then the group saw someone jump into the clearing, the ninja was wearing a red and green battle kimono and a porcelain mask which is similar to the ones that the ANBU wear. I'd like to thank you for stopping him, I've been after him for quite a long time, said the mysterious ninja. Who are you, 
asked Naruto as the fusion swords faded away and he was about to draw out one of the Muramesa blades if Anko hadn't stopped him. Naruto-kun relax, this is one of the Hunternin and by the markings on the mask, he belongs to the hidden mist village, said Anko. Well then, I'll be on my way now, the Hunternin grabbed Zabuza's body and used a body flicker to disappear before them with Naruto looking suspicious at the action. Hearing footsteps, Naruto turned to see Sakura and Hinata running towards him and began looking at his injuries. Naruto-kun, are you okay? asked Hinata worriedly. You shouldn't have fought him alone, scolded Sakura. I'm fine, but I'll be passing out due to chakra exhaustion so see you later, said Naruto before closing eyes and losing consciousness. We'll need to take Naruto and Kakashi somewhere to rest and recover from the battle, Kurinai turned to the bridge builder, where is your house? It's not too far from here, I'll show you the way, said Tazuna, Sakura and Hinata helped carry Naruto with Tora sitting on his head, Anko and Kurinai for Kakashi and Shino for Kiba. Sasuke was looking at Naruto intently. Where did he get such power? I could use a power like that to kill my brother, thought the raven-haired ninja. Later on, Tazuna had led the group to his home where they met his daughter Tsunami. They put Kakashi and Naruto in the same room while Kiba was being attended by the girls. With Naruto, he was currently within his mindscape looking at the fox who was trying to avoid eye contact with the blonde and Chinami stood at the side watching. Karama, it's time to start explaining, is there something you're not telling me and why did you add the Kun to my name? One would only do that if they are a Naruto's eyes widened at the conclusion before looking at Kurama. Kurama, are you by any chance a girl? Kurama nodded shyly before a flash of red light and it faded to reveal a girl standing before him, she had a deep orange hair which was tied to a ponytail, red eyes with black slits, a crimson red kimono, fox ears at the top of her head and nine tails behind her. Yes Naruto-kun, I'm a girl said Kurama looking at the ground. She looks so beautiful, thought Naruto while blushing, but why didn't you tell me? It's because I developed feelings for you, but I was scared that you would reject me since I was the one responsible for your parents' death and your mistreatment from the village, said Kurama trying to hold back tears, but was surprised when Naruto pulled her into a hug. You're so silly, I thought I told you that I've have forgiven you so stop beating yourself about it. It's all in the past now and I'm willing to accept your feelings, said Naruto. Tears started to flow from the fox's eyes as she hugged him tightly while saying thank you repeatedly. Naratosama, it seems like you're fully healed now and the others are checking up on you soon, said Chinami. Thanks for telling me and I'll see you later, said Naruto before fading from the mindscape with Kurama looking very happy with herself. Naruto woke up to see Tora sleeping on his stomach and Kakashi sitting up from his futon and reading an orange book, he turned to give him an eye smile upon seeing that the blonde was now awake. It's good to see that you're awake and well, said Kakashi happily. I can say the same for you Kakashi sensei or should I say Inu, Kakashi's eyes widened in surprise. You knew my code name back then, asked Kakashi. Like I told Ankakan, I'll never forget those who helped me and I know who my father is and you are my god brother, said Naruto. I wanted to take care of you like sensei would have wanted, but those damn civilian council stopped me from doing so and I could only protect you while in being in the ANBU, you won't have to worry about those bigots again, Kakashi looked at Naruto with confusion, I was found out about some secret dealings between them and Danzo so you can ask about it from Gigi, soon after, the rest of the team came to check on them. Sasuke wanted to ask Naruto about his weapons but was earlier told by Kurinai that it was in class secret so he has to ask either Naruto or the third Hokage about it. Dobe, what was that weapon you wielded? asked Sasuke. That is one of the many weapons that I can wield thanks to the bracelet and it can only be used by someone with a pure heart, said Naruto, Sasuke was inwardly angry that he wouldn't be able to get it. Meanwhile, Kakashi was thinking deeply which caught Shino's attention. Sensei, what's the matter? asked Shino. I'm feeling as if I've left something out and it involves that Hunter Nin, said Kakashi. Now that you mention it, I read that Hunter Nins destroy the bodies of their targets and take the head back to the village for confirmation, said Naruto. 
You're right Naruto, there is also the method of how Zabuza was killed. My experience with Senban needles shown me that where Zabuza was struck would put him in a near-death state, said Anko. Which means that Zabuza is still alive, said Shino much to the shock of the genin except Naruto who had figured it out earlier before them. So what do we do sensei, asked Sakura. We'll be training for the next time Zabuza shows up, said Kurinai judging by the damage dealt by Naruto, it would take at least a week for Zabuza to recover, then we'll rest up for today and then begin training tomorrow, said Naruto. Meanwhile, a young boy was listening in from behind the door before walking away. Why should they even bother, they'll just get themselves killed by Gato like Dad did, he was unaware of the hope that a certain blonde would bring back to the people of the village. Later that night, while Naruto was asleep, the bracelet started to pulse with white light before fading away, Chinami sensed this and thought, it seems like the bracelet is awakening a new power, I wonder what it is? The next day, Naruto woke up from the bed and rubbed his eyes to remove the sleepiness as he greeted Kurama and Chinami within his mindscape. Good morning Kurachan and Chinamazan, thought Naruto. Good morning Narutakun, said Kurama. Good morning Naratosama. I sense your teammates are downstairs with your sensei, said Chinami. Thanks for letting me know, thought Naruto. Then he went downstairs to meet up the others as Kakashi was still feeling the effects of chakra exhaustion and so had to remain in bed to recover from it. When he got downstairs, Naruto saw Hinata and Sakura helping Tsunami at the kitchen, Anko and Kurinai discussing plans at the table. Tazuna secretly drinking sake while making sure Tsunami was not looking his way, Shino sitting silently but one could hear a slight buzzing from him, Sasuke sitting quietly alone and Kiba with his partner Akamaru looking around the house a bit. Naruto also saw a boy looking at them with anger and caught a trace of hopelessness. When he set eyes on Naruto, Kiba smirked at him, look who finally decided to wake up, did you faint when you fought against Zabuza, I expect no less from the class clown, Actually Kiba, Naruto was the one who defeated Zabuza and saved. Kakashi sensei said Shino. What? There's no way that he would be able to go up against one of the seven swordsmen of the mist. I don't expect you to believe it since you were knocked out at the time, said Naruto with a smirk, Kiba was about to reply when he was interrupted by Kurinai. That's enough, whether you believe it or not, that's what happened since Kakashi is currently recovering from chakra exhaustion, we'll be the ones to train you. So after breakfast, we'll meet up in the clearing, what's the point of training? Gato will just kill all of you, everyone turned to see the boy glaring at them. And who might you be? asked Kiba. This is my dear grandson Inari, said Tazuna, Inari merely ignored them and went upstairs, he took a glance at Naruto before continuing on his way. Narutakun, I sense sorrow from him, said Kurama. I know Kurachan, I'll talk to him later, thought Naruto. After eating breakfast, Naruto and the others met up in a clearing in the middle of a forest. Naruto, Sakura and Hinata looked calm. Kiba looked excited, Shino was silent and Sasuke was brooding. Before we start, could you tell us what Kakashi taught you so that we know what to do, asked Kurinai. So far Kakashi Sensei taught us teamwork exercises, we were taught chakra control at our clan homes, said Shino with Kiba nodding in agreement. I learned it from my clan scrolls, said Sasuke. If that's case, you three will continue to work on your chakra control and I will watch over you, Kurinai and our team will guard Tazuna, said Anko. Later on, Naruto and the others were at the incomplete bridge, watching Tazuna supervise the workers on the construction. This is a pretty impressive bridge, I gotta hand it to you old man, said Naruto. Thanks kid, once this bridge is complete, life will finally return to wave and will be free of Gato's tyranny, said Tazuna. I I s it that bad here in wave, asked Hinata. Tazuna shook his head sadly, there's no words to even describe it, you should see it for yourself. I think we'll do just that after we're done here, said Sakura. Then one of the workers approached Tazuna. Tazuna, I need to talk to you, said the man. Jinjo, what is it that you want to talk about, asked Tazuna. What I want to say is that I want to back out of this project, 
said Jinjo, Naruto, and the rest were surprised that the man was abandoning the construction. What? But why you quitting when we're so close to finishing the bridge, shouted Tazuna as they were good friends since their youth. Well thing is that I was all for your idea of building for the sake of the island, but I concerned for the safety of my family when I'm not around to protect them, said Jinjo, Tazuna looked at him for a while before signing in disappointment. Very well then, we were breaking for lunch anyway, so you can just pack up and leave, as Jinjo turned to leave, he saw the ninja which Tazuna hired for protection give him. Looks of anger and disappointment as if knowing the true reason for abandoning the project. When he walked by Naruto, he heard the blonde ninja mutter out loud for him to hear. You coward, hearing this made his heart clench with guilt. Naruto left Tora with Hinata and walked up to Tazuna who looked depressed. Hey old man, how many constructors like him had abandoned the project? It seems like when I was out of the island, six had called it quits and now we're seriously understaffed, at this rate, we'll never get the bridge done, said Tazuna. Then all we need to do is get more hands in on the work, I can help you with that issue, Tazuna looked confused while Kurinai, Sakura and Hinata knew what he intends to do. And where can you get that kind of help? Naruto simply smirked and formed the cross sign, then in a puff of white smoke dozens of clones appeared much to the man's surprise. These are my shadow clones, they are solid so they can interact with anything so you can tell them what to do, thanks for the workforce kid, I really appreciate it. Now we can really get some work done, with that Tazuna started giving orders to the clones who responded with earnest. Later that day, Naruto escorted Sakura and Hinata to the market to buy food for dinner after offering to do so for Tsunami. They were shocked to see that there was barely anything worth buying from the stalls. On their way back, a man was passing by them and tried to pickpocket by Sakura put a stop to that by kicking him in the gut, making him fall to the floor in pain. I can't believe things are so bad around here, said Sakura. The poverty will destroy this island if the bridge isn't complete, we have to make sure Gato doesn't succeed, Naruto while gritting his teeth in anger, Tora popped out of his hood and meowed in agreement. Naruto felt a hand grab his jacket and turn to attack, only to stop when he saw a girl standing before him dressed in rags. Could you spare me some food for me and my friends at the orphanage, asked the girl, Naruto felt sad looking at the girl before rubbing her head and smiled, Hinata and Sakura looked just as sad. Of course, could you show us the way to your friends, the girl nodded happily and walked off with Naruto and the others following close behind. Soon they reached their location and Naruto could see how run down the building is. They could see that some of the children haven't eaten for and others looked ill. We have to help them somehow, even if it is for a while, said Sakura, Naruto, and Hinata nodded in agreement. Two have some medicine in my pouch, IIT might help with some of their illness, said Hinata, bringing out a packet from her pouch. I've got some food rations here in my storage scroll and a med kit, said Naruto, holding out a scroll. Great, I'll use the med kit to tend to them, the group proceeded to care for the children till they felt better for the meantime. Naruto could see that some of the children still looked depressed and tried to think of a way to cheer them up. After thinking deeply for a bit, his eyes widened and smiled mischievously. Hey girls, give me a moment, I know of a way to put some smiles on these kids, said Naruto walking to another room. Naruto what are you up to, asked Sakura, Naruto didn't answer and entered the room. After a while he came out and to everyone's surprise was wearing a yellow banana suit and holding a pair of maracas, then he started to sing. Buckwheat boys, peanut butter jelly time it's peanut butter jelly time, peanut butter jelly time, peanut butter jelly time, chorus. Where he at 4x there he go 4x peanut butter jelly 4x do the peanut butter jelly, peanut butter jelly, peanut butter jelly with a baseball bat 2x, chorus, now, break it down and freeze 4x, chorus, now tic-tac-toe, uh -huh. tic-tac-toe, let's go, tic-tac-toe, you got it, tic-tac-toe, let's ride, chorus, now, freestyle, 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 freestyle. Your style 2x where he at 4x there he go 4x as he sang, 
many of the kids along with Sakura and Hinata started to laugh and some even joined in with the silly dance. After a while of singing and dancing, it was time for them to go which saddened many of the children. Will we see you again? asked the little girl sadly. We'll be here for a while as we the ones protecting Tazuna while he's building the bridge, said Naruto, the children waved happily as the ninjas left for Tazuna's house. When they were eating at the dinner table, Sakura noticed that a piece of the family picture had been torn. Tazuna-san, whose part of the picture has been torn? Tazuna seemed depressed while Tsunami looked ready to cry. That was Kaiza, Tsunami's husband and Inari's father, then Tazuna proceeded to tell them of how he was seen as a hero of the island by everyone, but when he tried to go up against Gato, he was killed in front of the crowd so as to serve as an example. Everyone was silent until Naruto got up with Tora jumping into his hood and walked towards the door with everyone watching him. Naruto, where are you going? asked Kurinai. Naruto didn't turn but he replied. I'm going to get some fresh air, the girls got up to follow him but were stopped by Kakashi. Why did you stop us Kakashi-sensei? asked Hinata, not stuttering for once. It's because I can tell that he wants to be alone, at those words, the girl sat back at the table while Kakashi went back to reading his book much to the annoyance of the females in the kitchen. That Gato is going to pay for all this, for what he did to Inari and his family, thought Naruto with his tenants agreeing with him. Indeed, he was the reason why Inari is so bitter. The trauma of seeing his father being killed in front of him destroyed his belief in hope, said Kurama. I know Kurachan, but so far all we know is Gato is a business tycoon and the cause of the poverty in the island, thought Naruto. May I suggest we gather information about him then Naruto-sama, said Chinami. That's a good idea, and I know just how to do it, Naruto took to the rooftops. After jumping from roof to roof, Naruto saw a guy walking along the street while dressed roguishly and carrying a sword. With the way he's dressed and body language, he must be one of Gato's underlings, maybe following him might lead us to where Gato's located, said Kurama. My thoughts exactly, let's see where he leads us to, murmured Naruto with Tora popping out if his hood and nodding. Naruto had Tora sit on his shoulder as he pulled the hood over his head, then he focused on the bracelet and called out, honor among thieves, in a flash of light, he was holding the Cooper cane in his hand. Seeing that he was all prepped up, Naruto took to the treetops as he kept a close eye on his target. Whoa, that little rat sure knows how to live large, Naruto had been trailing the bandit for a while until he reached his intended destination only to be surprised upon seeing the building. It was a mansion built behind a big wall which prevents anyone from looking inside, he could also see several bandits acting as sentries in the courtyard and two more were stationed at the entrance where a torch was lit. I need to find a way to get around the guards, they'll be able to spot me when near the torch so I'll need to draw them away from it, Naruto thought deeply before snapping his fingers upon having an idea and grinned with Tora tilting her head in confusion. The guards were looking around for anything out of the ordinary when they heard a croak and turned to see a small frog sitting in front of them. Before they could say anything, the frog brought out a top hat and a cane before starting to sing and dance, any of you who watched Looney Tunes will get the idea. Wanting to get a better view, the guards went closer to the dancing frog, they were unaware of someone sneaking past them with a foxy grin. Shadow clone plus transformation plus cartoons equals great distraction, I really owe it to Deadpool Sensei for introducing me to them, they really crack me up as well as give me ideas, thought Naruto. That's true, but sometimes I question that guy's sanity, said Kurama. When he got in, Naruto was using the bushes to avoid getting detected by the guards patrolling until he finally reached the manor. Naruto looked around for an entry point until he saw a small open window, he was about to move when a guard turned around a corner forcing him back into the bushes. Naruto grabbed a pebble and threw it in the opposite direction which made the guard move towards the sound, then he climbed through the window and ended up in a storeroom. Cautiously peeking through the door, Naruto snuck through the hallways and silently climbed into the air vents so as to get around more easily with Tora walking beside him. Soon Naruto heard voices and crawled towards the sound until he reached an opening. 
where he looked to see a man talking to a much shorter man sitting behind an office table. I guess that must be Gatto, I wonder which part of the family that he inherited the ugliness from? I sure that was a face even his mother didn't love, Naruto smirked when he heard Kurama and Chinami giggle at his joke before listening in on their conversation. Boss, are you really going to pay Zabuza for the job? asked the man. Of course not, when Zabuza kills the bridge builder and those ninjas, he'll be worn out we can use that opportunity to kill him with no trouble, besides ninjas like him are too expensive anyway, Naruto gritted his teeth in anger at how much a scum this midget is, Kurama was growling while Chinami simply scowled. By the way, what about the girl that we captured? So far she is stubbornly resisting, but no one can reach her since I have the keys, said the man. We'll just have to deal with her after killing Zabuza, I heading to my room to rest for the night, Gato got and left with the man following him. Naruto dropped from the vent and turned to Tora, Tora I need you to check for anything important while I follow that guy to where the girl is kept prisoner, Tora meowed in affirmation as Naruto snuck after the man. As Naruto trailed the man, he saw the set of keys sticking out of his pocket. I'd better take a key just in case, Naruto skillfully used the cane to pickpocket the keys before silently placing it back after taking one, then he jumped to the ceiling and used his chakra to stick there just as the man turned to look around before walking away. Naruto stayed on the man until he entered the basement and stood before a cell. I don't know why we should wait when I could tame you right now, the man grinned lustfully as he was about to reach for the keys to open the cell when he felt a hand clamp his mouth and two fingers pinch a certain point of his neck lulling him to sleep. Sssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssssss
Don't you that if you keep staying here, Gato will just kill you with no effort? shouted Inari. Kid calm down, there's no need for you to act that, I've trained for things like this, said Naruto. Shut up. Seeing that look on your makes me sick, I bet you never had to suffer in your whole life. Then was snap and everyone turned to see that Naruto's hair covered his eyes and the chopsticks were broken in his hand. Kakashi, Anko, Kurinai, Sakura and Hinata glared at Inari who looked confused even Tora hissed at him, then they heard Naruto speak. I don't know about suffering. Don't make me laugh. At least you have a family and knew your father for a while, I had no idea who my parents were and if they even loved me until recently and I found out that they're dead. I always had to look over my shoulder just to make that there's no one aiming for my life. People look at me as if asking why I even exist and try to erase my existence. So until you've experienced what I had, don't stand in front of my face and say you've suffered more than anyone. Else. You know what? I'm getting out of here before I do anything I'll regret, the whole place was silent until Tsunami spoke up. Did he really mean what he said? If anything, what Naruto said was the sugar-coated version of his story, said Kakashi. Everyone was stunned by what they had witnessed as they had seen Naruto act like nothing could ever faze him. Inari ran out of the house in tears and went sit at the pier and look at the moon, hearing footsteps, he turned to see Naruto walking up to him. What do you want? Here to yell at me again, asked Inari. Actually, I'm here to apologize, Inari looked surprised but remained silent for Naruto to continue, when you said those things, it reminded me of what happened in the past which made me blow up on you, but how? How were you able to be what you are today, asked Inari. The thing is that I got tired of crying and sulking as I felt it was a waste of time, so I decided to do something more with my life and I also had people around to support me, Inari looked at Naruto in wonder. 2 I'm sorry for what I said before, I shouldn't have said those things, Naruto patted Inari in the head while smiling, Kurama and Chinami smiled at the scene. I had already forgiven for you, I'm not one for bearing grudges and I promise to you that Gato is going to pay for what he did, said Naruto, Inari hugged the blonde ninja as he could feel that he could keep that promise. Now get back to bed, I'll stay outside for a little while longer, Inari went back while Naruto walked into the forest. The next morning, Naruto felt someone approach him and quickly got up and shifted to a fighting stance. He saw a girl wearing a pink kimono with flower designs on it and holding a basket of herbs. Sorry about that, I thought you were an enemy, Naruto sheepishly rubbed the back of his head. It's okay, I was about to wake you since you could have caught a cold. I was here to gather herbs, said the girl, he looks quite cute, especially with those whisker marks, it makes me want to rub it, then let me help you, my name is Naruto Uzumaki, and my name is Haku, thank you for the help. Naruto was helping her pick the herbs but noticed something strange about them. These are herbs which one would use for healing injuries, could she be the fake hunter Nin? thought Naruto. You're right Naruto-sama, her aura is the same as that day you fought with Tsubuza, said Chinami. Naruto's thoughts were interrupted when he heard Haku speak to him. Do you have someone who is precious to you? asked Haku. Yes I do, they gave me a reason to keep going said Naruto, happily thinking of everyone who loved and cared for him. That's good, I believe that you truly become strong when you have something to protect, said Haku, Naruto stared at her for a while before smiling and nodding in understanding. Haku got up to leave but stopped when Naruto called out. I hope to see you again, said Naruto. I hope so too. Said Haku trying to hide her sadness at having to fight him in the near future, oh and by the way, I'm a boy, but Naruto looked unfazed. Please, I know that you're a girl, thought Naruto as he watched Haku leave. I truly don't want to fight you Naruto-kun, wait since when do I like him that? I'm nothing but a tool for Zabuza, thought Haku although her heart was beating in protest. The next morning, Team 7 and 8 were about to leave with Tazuna to go to the bridge, however not all of them were going. I'll be leaving Naruto in your hand Tsunami-san, said Kurinai, 
At a side glance she could see that Sakura and Hinata weren't happy with leaving Naruto behind and Tora choose to go with them. Are you sure about leaving him behind? asked Tsunami. It's no problem at all, Narutokun had pushed himself too hard last night with his training and he won't be able to move for the whole day, said Anko. I expect no less from the class clown, said Kiba, Sakura, Hinata and Enko glared at the Inazuka for his lack of disrespect. Kiba, the day you go up against Naratosan will be a day of rude awakening, thought Shino as he had been observing Naruto and noticed that the blonde has completely changed from the academy days. And there's also the matter of his chakra, my insects get restless whenever I'm close to him, and as I've fully recovered, I should be able to make up for his absence, said Kakashi while reading his book. Tsunami was fighting the urge not to hit him with a frying pan. All right then let us be off, said Tazuna as he leads them towards the bridge, the Jounin looked back at the house and thought of what happened last night. Flashback I think I should stay behind while you go to the bridge with Tazuna and the others, said Naruto as he sat with his sensei in his room. What makes you say that Naruto, asked Karinai. I think I know the reason why he wants to stay behind, it's because of Gato and his men right? said Kakashi looking up from his book. Yes, we already know that Gato will show with his men on the bridge to kill Zabuza since he won't pay but I get the feeling that he will try hold Tsunami and Inari as a hostage against Azuna, said Naruto, they agreed as he was right so far. There is possibility for that as Gato had killed Inari's father in front of the public, so it shouldn't surprise us that he would try it again, said Anko, that guy better run when he sees me, because he's definitely gonna get a snake bite at his package, Naruto and Kakashi shuddered at the thought of it. Anko can be scary when she wants to, said Kurama with Chinami nodding in agreement. So the plan is that I remain behind so as to safeguard Tsunami-san Inari in case Gato's men show up, afterwards I'll quickly move to the bridge and assist you in the fight against Zabuza said Naruto. That's the gist of it, we'll try not to kill him until Gato arrives as I'm sure that he won't believe us if we tell him the truth, said Anko. Then we raid Gato's mansion and rescue the Jinchuriki of the Seven Tails, said Kakashi, though he flinched when he saw Naruto glare at him, sorry, I didn't meant it that way, okay, but just be careful about it next time, said Naruto before turning to the others. I don't think we should tell our students as it might ruin the plan and we need the element of surprise, said Karinai to which they nodded in agreement. All right, let's rest for tomorrow, said Anko, then they all went to bed. Flashback and their thoughts were broken when they heard Tazuna shout out in shock upon reaching the bridge, the construction workers were sprawled out on the floor and unconscious. What happened here? It looks like someone was here and got to them, said Tazuna worriedly. Then a thick mist covered the bridge, alerting everyone to stand on guard. He's right, I've got two cents but now I can't locate them, said Kiba with Akamaru barking in agreement. Two can't see anything with this mist, even with my Byakugan, said Hinata, taking the gentle fist stance and Sakura stood nearby with a kunai. Just like we thought, Zabuza is still alive, said Kakashi as he raised his headband to reveal his Sharingan eye. Yeah, and he's back for round two, Anko took out two kunai and stayed close to Kurinai. Then they heard Zabuza's voice from the mist. Sorry if I kept you all waiting, I was hoping for a rematch with the brat wielding the Muramesa. But since he's not here, I'll just have waste some time with you and the brats, then four clones surrounded them with their Zambata drawn out. I can see that one of them is trembling, Sasuke simply smirked at them, actually, I'm trembling with excitement, show them what you can do, at words, Sasuke dashed and slashed one of the clones, Kiba used the all fours jutsu to take down another, Shino used his insects to absorb the chakra of his target and Hinata used her clan's taijutsu to disrupt the chakra of the last clone. It looks like your brats have improved, to be able to take down my water clones is an achievement. Maybe this won't be such a bore after all. Zabuza appeared from the mist along with the fake hunter Nin. Sasuke and Kiba, you go after the ninja while Anko and I deal with Zabuza. Kurinai will stay with Hinata, Sakura and Shino to guard Tazuna, said Kakashi, receiving nods of affirmation. Haku, when the situation goes bad, you have my permission to use it, 
said Zabuza. Yes, Sabyazasama, said Haku, getting ready for battle. Then Sasuke and Kiba dashed at Haku with their kunai drawn as she takes out a senban to fight back while Kakashi and Enko moved in to engage Zabuza in the mist. Kurinai noticed that Hinata and Sakura looked worried and thought that it was about the battle. You shouldn't worry about them, I'm sure they'll be fine, she was surprised when they shook their heads in negative. It's not them that we're worried about, it's Narutakun, said Sakura, Hinata. Nodded in agreement. WWE hoping that he'll recover soon to come and help us, said Hinata, Kurinai kept silent as she knew the reason why he isn't here yet. Naruto, please hurry and get here soon before Gato shows up, we could really use your help at that time, meanwhile back at Tazuna's house, Naruto was meditating and had entered his mindscape to speak with Kurama and Chinami. I'm pretty much sure that Kakashi Sensei and the others are fighting against Zabuza and Haku by now, said Naruto. Yeah, but you can't go yet, not until Tsunami-san and Inari are safe, said Kurama. I know Kuchin, I just feeling a bit anxious, Kurama blushed at her pet name from Naruto, then Chinami spoke. Naratosama, I wanted to inform you that the bracelet has unlocked a new ability, really, what kind of ability is it? asked Naruto with curiosity. It's called Tag Mode, it allows your allies to wield the weapons from the bracelet for a limited amount of time. They will acquire the knowledge of the weapon once they hold it, but only those with good intentions can truly wield to their full potential, said Chinami. Wow, that's a very useful ability to have, so how do I activate it? All you need to do is say, Tag Mode, and the keyword to activate it, Narutakun, I almost forgot to tell you that in order to access the inner power of the weapons, you must call out, Awaken, and the keyword. Remember that you need my chakra for it to work, said Kurama to which Naruto nodded in affirmation. Naratosama, wake up. Some men have broken into the house and are kidnapping Tsunami-san. I'm on it. Naruto immediately and started fade from the mindscape, when he opened his eyes, he heard Inari's voice from outside the house. You leave my mom alone. Naruto saw Inari charge at the men and quickly jumped from the window to help while channeling chakra to the bracelet. Journey to the West Naruto summoned the golden staff and slammed it into the face of bandit holding Tsunami and kicked away the other bandit. Sorry if I'm late, heroes always show at the last minute, Narutonayakan. Naruto was a bit surprised by what Inari called him before smiling at the boy. I have to say Inari, that was very brave of you. The moment you shouted at them, it was enough of a distraction for me to save your mother. I'm sure that your dad will be very proud, said Naruto, Inari smiled happily at what he heard. You're dead meat brat, you won't get the drop on me, the bandit got up and drew his sword before charging at them. Naruto smirked at him and slung the staff over his shoulder. I don't think I need to since I'm going to bash you all over, Naruto ran at the bandit and swung at him, bandit raised his sword to block but the staff broke the blade much to his surprise. Naruto then performed an uppercut to launch him in the air and used the staff's ability to stretch to execute a rapid fire of jabs, juggling the bandit in the air and finished it by enlarging. The staff to the size of a tree trunk and sent him flying a great distance far from them. And he's going, 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 going and he's gone, Naruto grinned while Inari laughed at the spectacle. That was amazing Nikon, but why are you here instead of being at the bridge? asked Inari. That's because I had a feeling that Gato would try something like this, so I stayed behind to make sure that you and your mom safe, said Naruto, Inari hugged him while crying. Thank you for protecting us Nikon, Naruto returned the hug with a gentle smile. It's okay, but now I got to get to the bridge fast, my team needs me, okay, show Gato what you can do. Naruto grinned and ruffled Inari's hair. Naruto made the golden staff disappear before focusing on the bracelet again, ride the wing road, then he summoned the air treks and took off towards the bridge at high speed. Along the way, he had an image of the previous owner perform a technique which made him fly in the air flash through his mind. What was that about, thought Naruto. Naratosama, that was the memory of the gear, it must want you to use it, 
said Chinami. Are all the other weapons like that? Yes, and they will only do so when the situation calls for it, okay then, let's give it a try. Naruto skated up a nearby tree and launched himself into the air, then he channeled his wind chakra into the air treks and called out, Wing Road. Blue energy burst from the treks and took on the form of wings, and Naruto was flying towards much faster than when he was skating on the ground. I should be able to make it to the bridge in time, meanwhile at the bridge, things weren't looking too good. Sasuke and Kiba were fighting against Haku who was able to keep up with them at the same time. Take this. Kiba swiped at Haku who quickly dodged and kicked, then she launched several senban which struck at certain parts of his body, completely paralyzing him as he fell to the floor. And now for you, Haku turned to Sasuke charging in with his kunai in both hands. Don't get so cocky, he clashed his kunai with Haku's senban as both sides struggled for domination. You have just made a huge mistake as I've now gained two key advantages, said Haku. And what would they be, asked Sasuke trying to push her back. The first is that we are surrounded by water, and the second is that I've one of your hands busy while the other can only be used to defend yourself, Haku started to perform hand seals with just one hand to the shock of everyone around. How's that possible? I've never seen anyone do that before, said Sakura with the rest silently agreeing with her. Secret art, a thousand needles of death, Haku stomped on the ground and the water rose to the air and took on form of needles and surrounded them. Concentrate my chakra, Sasuke quickly chakra to his body in preparation for his next action. It's over, Haku quickly jumped back right before the needles struck, looked. Expecting to see the raven-haired boy to be covered in needles but was surprised, especially when the said person appeared behind her and dealt a powerful punch to the head and sent her flying. What? The brat was able to beat Haku in speed, thought Zabuza as he dodged the snakes from Enko's attacks. I guess you were as fast as you thought, Sasuke smirked as he watched Haku slowly get up. It may seem so, but I'll have to apologize since you give me no choice but to use this jutsu, said Haku, she then formed an unknown hand sign and the temperature began to drop. Why does it feel so cold all of a sudden, asked Sakura. It must be coming from that fake hunter Neen, could it be that she has a bloodline limit, said Karinai in shock. Secret art, crystal ice mirrors, several mirrors made of solid ice surrounded Sasuke to from a dome, then Haku walked into one of the mirrors and completely melded with it, leaving only her reflection and appeared the other mirrors. It's all over for the brat, no one has ever survived once Haku uses that jutsu, said Zabuza swinging his sword at Kakashi who barely dodged it. Now it's time for me to show you what speed really is, Haku started to launch Senban at Sasuke at a rapid pace, leaving him no room for him to attack or defend. Soon enough he was on the floor covered in sunbon needles. Damn it, I can't lose here. I must fulfill my ambition, I won't die here, as he got up, Sasuke noticed that he was seeing things more clearly than before. What has happened to your eyes, they weren't like that before, said Haku, which made Sasuke figure out the cause for his clear vision. It seems like I've finally unlocked my Sharingan, now I can even the odds, Sasuke was getting up when they heard something and looked up to see someone coming towards with blue energy shaped like wings from his shoes, they saw the blonde hair and instantly knew who it was. Naruto-kun. You're here. Hinata and Sakura were overjoyed to see the blonde ninja. Sorry if I'm late, I had to take care of something. So can you tell me what's going here, asked Naruto after dispelling the air treks. Kakashi and Anko are currently fighting Zabuza, Kiba was taken out of the fight after being struck with Senban needles which paralyzed him and Sasuke is trapped inside the fake hunter Nin's jutsu, said Kurinai. Then I'd better go in and help Sasuke while you help Kiba recover, said Naruto, then he ran into the crystal mirrors just as Haku launched another barrage of Senban needles at Sasuke. Sasuke get down. Wind style, typhoon dance. Naruto jumped over Sasuke and spun like a top and the wind swirled around him, deflecting the Senban needles before landing next to his fellow ninja. Sasuke, are you okay? asked Naruto. 
Yeah, I'm fine now that I've unlocked my Sharingan I should be to see through her attacks, Sasuke performed some hand signs before ending in a tiger seal. What are you planning? Since the mirrors are made of ice then the best way to destroy them would be to use fire. Fire style, grand fireball. Sasuke shot a large ball of flame at the mirrors but when the fire faded away, it was as if they were never hit by the fire. But how? It was supposed to work, said Naruto. It seems like she fused chakra into her mirror, hence making it harder to destroy and the Uchiha's fire jutsu wasn't strong enough, said Chinami. You'll need more heat to melt this ice, Naruto noticed the mirrors light up and realized that an attack was coming, he started to form hand signs but was too late as he and Sasuke were pelted with Senban needles left and right. Damn, I didn't even get to complete the hand signs, we were hit too quickly, thought Naruto, then he whispered to Sasuke, Sasuke, I'm going to try something and I want you to observe with your Sharingan, okay but what are you up to, asked Sasuke. Shadow Clone Jutsu Naruto summoned several clones jumped at the mirrors, intending to smash them but disappeared into puffs of smoke. It's useless, you can't keep up with me, said Haku. But Naruto ignored her and turned to Sasuke. So far, all I know is that she is able to transport herself through the mirrors at light speed, I couldn't see her clearly at the speed at which she is moving, said Sasuke. If that's the case, I need to get you out of here, said Naruto much to Sasuke's surprise and anger. What do you mean by that? I can still fight, shouted Sasuke angrily. I know that, because I'll need your help for the incoming attack, what attack? aren't we just fighting Zabuza and the fake hunter Neen? That would have been the case, but there's more to it than we knew, so will you cooperate? asked Naruto, Sasuke looked at him for a moment before signing in resignation. Fine, but how will you get me out of here? Like this, Sasuke was covered by white smoke and when it cleared, he saw himself outside of the crystal mirrors. He looked inside and saw a clone of Naruto standing at where he was and realized what he did. Naruto must have used substitution to switch places with me and his clone, how much has he changed from the academy, thought Sasuke as he watched Naruto. Now it's between you and me, Naruto turned to face the mirrors. I will defeat you, for the sake of Zabuzasama, said Haku, she shot out of the mirror and slashed him several times across his body before he could react and knelt on the ground from the damage. There's no way that you can keep up with my speed, damn she's right, and she won't let me complete my jutsus either. There has to be some way to turn this around, then the bracelet flashed and Naruto had a vision of a man donning a suit and pointing to the sky. Naruto smiled and started to laugh, much to Haku's confusion. What's so funny? asked Haku. You think you know speed, but I'm gonna show you what true speed is, Naruto focused on the bracelet called out the new gear. Henshin. Henshin. There was a bright flash before it faded to reveal Naruto in a heavy armored bodysuit with the upper body covered in metal plating and a belt with a rhinoceros beetle for the belt buckle. What was that? How was he able to summon that armor? What does he means by show me true speed, as far as I can tell the armor would slow him down, thought Haku as she observed. Get ready to face the power of a Kamen Rider. Naruto stood ready for battle. Haku launched another barrage of Senban from all directions with no hope of avoiding, but Naruto flipped the horn to the middle and the armor pieces loosened, and then he pulled it to the right and called out. Cast off, cast off, change beetle, the armor pieces flew off, deflecting the needles to reveal a much sleeker form which resembles more of a rhinoceros beetle with the horn snapping to his helmet. He drew out his Kabuto Kanai gun and held it at the ready. Naruto then swiped a hand at the side of his belt and called out. Clock up, clock up, Haku shot out of the mirror at Naruto and tried to slash him, but he blurred out of the way and appeared at her side and delivered haymaker punch. Haku recovered in midair and entered a mirror and shot several Senban needles at him. Naruto grabbed the gun barrel to reveal a kunai which he used to deflect all of the projectiles without a hitch, then he dashed at the mirror while reattaching the gun barrel and held it for the axe mode, 
he swung at the mirror right as Haku got out and shattered it much to Haku's surprise. That's impossible. Even Zabuzasama would find it difficult to destroy my mirrors. Naruto disappeared and reappeared beside Haku and dealt a heel drop kick, then he shot at her with his gun but Haku used substitution to dodge and entered the mirrors again. Naruto-kun, you have to end this battle before Gato shows up, said Kurama. Indeed, you have to conserve your strength for the oncoming battle, said Chinami. All right then, time to end this battle, Naruto pressed the buttons on the belt buckle and pushed the horn to the left. One, two, three, rider, kick, then he pulled it back to the right. I can't let him finish what he is doing. Haku dashed out of the mirror to attack Naruto from behind which was a mistake in her part. Rider kick, white lightning flowed from the belt buckle to his horn and then to his right leg which he used to perform a 360 roundhouse kick which sent Haku flying through one of her mirrors and rolling across the ground with her mask shattered and the remaining ice mirrors broke into pieces as well. Clock over, Zabuzasama, I couldn't beat him, I've failed you thought Haku as she got up painfully from the ground with her body bruised all over. Naruto dispelled his rider form and walked towards Haku who was slowly getting up from the ground. This fight is over Haku, I knew that it was you, I held back on that kick as I didn't want to kill you, said Naruto. Why didn't you finish me off? I'm nothing more than a broken tool that cannot serve its master, said Haku to Naruto's surprise. Why do you call yourself a tool? I see nothing but a beautiful girl who should have a life of her own will, Haku blushed from Naruto's compliment but responded nonetheless. It's because Zabuza saved me from certain death, in Kirigakure, those who possess a bloodline limit are killed. My father killed my mother after finding out that I have a bloodline and tried to kill me too but I killed him on self-defense. Zabuza picked me up from the streets, he made me feel needed which is why I help him, said Haku. Naratosama, I sense a lot of people at the end of the bridge, said Chinami. I understand your reason but I still won't kill you since this wasn't the reason my team and I were fighting, said Naruto, then he noticed that the mist was disappearing. What do you mean, asked Haku who was confused by what the blonde ninja was talking about. I think it's better you hear it from the horse's mouth, Naruto pointed and Haku looked in his direction to see Zabuza being restrained by Kakashi's dog summons and Enko's snakes. Everyone looked past them to see Gato and his men standing at the end of the bridge. Gato? What are you doing here and who are these thugs you brought with you? asked Zabuza but Kakashi answered instead. One of our students found out that Gato was planning to kill you and your apprentice after killing us and had never intended to pay you for killing Tazuna. Is what he said true Gato? asked Zabuza. That's right, I figured that you were too expensive, heck even these guys cost me money. But seeing as how the so-called demon of the mist couldn't do the job right, I will have my men do it for me instead, said Gato with a sneer and the thugs laughed behind him. Why you no good, Zabuza turned to the Kanoha ninja, so you knew about this. Yes we did but we knew that you wouldn't believe us without proof which was why we didn't go all out and restrained you until Gato showed up, said Enko. I see, then this fight is over, Kakashi and Enko released their summons for Zabuza to stand. Naruto with Haku walked up to him. So the enemy of my enemy is my friend, asked Naruto already knowing the answer. You're right about that one kid, but I don't think I can fight properly with my body like this, said Zabuza with a smirk behind his mask. Then they turned to face Gato. After we kill all those on the bridge, we'll raid the island and take the women as our sex slaves. Gato smiled lustfully at Sakura, Hinata and Haku, especially those girls, a massive killer intent was felt throughout, freezing everyone in place. Even the Jounin and Zabuza were having difficulty breathing but the three girls didn't feel it. Who's able to leak this level of killing intent? asked Zabuza, they turned to see Naruto glaring at Gato with absolute fury. This isn't from the Kyubi, but from Naruto himself. Gato must have really pissed him. Off, thought Kakashi. Naruto-kun is angry because of what Gato would do to me? But I just met him yesterday and tried to hurt him, why he would he protect me? thought Haku. 
No one has ever seen Naratosan angry and I hope that they never will, thought Shino as he tried to calm his insects down. And Narutakan cares about us this much, it makes me love him even more, thought Hinata. As Naruto glared at Gato, the bracelet glowed red as if reacting to his anger. You bastards just promoted yourselves from walking punching bags to dead men walking. Naruto had a vision of a man with pale skin and a red tattoo on his body with a scar on his right eye and a leather loincloth, he saw the man wield a pair of swords chained to his arms in the battlefield. Then he channeled Chakra to the bracelet and called out, for Sparta. In a flash of light, Naruto was holding a pair of swords which are chained to his arms and he took a stance before the bandits. Narutakun, show them no mercy, said Kurama with rage. Get ready, cause I'm going to send you on a one-way trip to the Shinigami. Naruto charged at them while Gato fearfully ran to the back of the group. Naruto threw one of the swords and it ignited with a golden flame and pierced through one of the bandits, he pulled the bandit over and used him as a battering ram to plow through the enemies before throwing him aside. He quickly rolled out of the way of a pincer attack and slammed a blade on the ground, unleashing a shockwave which raised through the bandits. Cyclone of Chaos Naruto swung his blades around him, hitting the surrounding enemies multiple times before rolling backwards for his next move. Rage of Tartarus He slammed the first blade on the ground, followed by the second before finally bringing both back and slamming them together on the ground, sending the bandits into the air. Wow, Narutakun is really laying it on them, said Anko. Narutakun, please be careful said Sakura. Where did Naruto get this power, said Sasuke. He has inherited his mother's protectiveness, said Kakashi. I know that he's fighting against Gato, but he should take it easy on the bridge, said Tazuna. Naruto was attacking the bandits when he felt the blades pulse with power as if struggling to be unleashed. If that's what it wants, then who am I to deny it, thought Naruto, then he cried out, Awaken. Rage of the Titans. Immediately Naruto's body surged with flames, scaring everyone around. Prometheus Torment Naruto twirled the blades in a blazing radial attack, searing through more of the bandits and finishing up with his final attack. Prometheus Inferno A fiery tornado exploded from Naruto's body and reduced the bandits to ash. Then Naruto walked over to Gato who was trembling with fear as the flames faded away but the swords were still ignited. Please don't kill me. I'll give you anything money, women, anything at all. Gato was on his knees begging for mercy. These are. One of the things which I hate about humans, their greed, said Kurama with Chinami nodding in agreement. But you can't bring people back to life. Besides I've already acquired all of your bank details and rights to your business since you're going to hell anyway, Naruto whipped out the swords in an X pattern and beheaded Gato as his body fell to the floor. Naruto heard a cheer and turned to see Inari along with the village celebrating Gato's death. Then he saw Sakura, Hinata, Haku, and the others run up to him. Narutakun, are you okay? said Haku which drew the attention of Sakura, Hinata, Anko and Zabuza. Could it be that she likes Narutakun too, thought Hinata. It seems like Haku and those girls have a thing for the kid, I'd better keep an eye on him, thought Zabuza. I'm fine but we're not done yet, we have to go and save someone from Gato's mansion. So I'll need Sakura, Hinata, Sasuke and Shino to follow me since Kiba is still out of commission, Naruto led the way with the others following while Kakashi and the rest stayed behind to guard the island. Soon they arrived at the front gates of Gato's, and Shino asked Naruto. What is your plan, Naruto-san? Naruto was about to reply when he heard Chinami talk to him. naruto I know of a gear that can help you and your teammates. I'm transferring the knowledge to you now, Naruto felt the knowledge flow through his head before speaking up. We'll raid Gato's mansion and take out all of the guards, and I've got the gear needed for the job, you mean we'll also wield the weapons that you have? asked Sasuke. Yeah, so get ready, Naruto focused on the bracelet and called out, tag mode. Gokai change. Gokai a cager. 
There was a flash of light and it faded to reveal Naruto and the others wearing helmet and outfit with a pirate motif and had grown a few inches but in different colors. Naruto was in red, Sakura was pink, Hinata was yellow, Sasuke was blue and Shino was green. Amazing, I feel so powerful, said Sasuke looking at himself. I'm wearing my favorite color, said Sakura while giggling. I've never experienced anything like this and my insects are quite comfortable, said Shino. Alright guys, let's do this. Naruto smashed through the gate with the others close behind as they engaged the enemies. At first, they were going with hand-to-hand -hand combat but soon they switched to using their sidearms which was the Gokai gun and the Gokai saber to take down there but they were getting pushed back by the numbers. Naruto-kun, what do we do? There are too many, said Hinata worriedly. Then it's time to get serious, everyone follow my lead, the rest gathered close to see Naruto bring out the mobile 8 and pressed a button on the belt buckle to reveal a key for him to take out, and they put away their weapons and did the same. Ready, receiving a nod of affirmation, they all put the keys inside and twisted. Gokai change. Zyuranger. They changed into suits with a dinosaur motif and charged in once again. Naruto was cutting the bandits down with his Rajiki sword, Hinata was jabbing with her saber daggers, Sakura was serving as cover fire with her Terra arrow, Sasuke was spearing his enemies with the Trisura lance and Shino was cutting the bandits down with his mothbreaker but would sometimes convert into blaster rifle for long range. Let's cut these kids down to size and show them their place, the bandits drew out their swords and charged at them. Humph, we'll see about that, said Sasuke with a smirk. They're getting reckless, let's finish this, once again they brought out another key and slotted it inside the mobile 8. Gokai change. Shiai Ainkinger. They switched into suits with a samurai motif, they drew out their spin swords and charged right back at the bandits. They were able to defeat the ex-samurai thanks to the knowledge of Kenjutsu embedded in the ranger mode. Take out your secret discs and spin them in the Shinkinmaru to activate your signature weapons, taking Naruto's advice, the team took out their discs and slotted them inside the swords and spun them before calling out. Reka Dizanto. Naruto slashed through his enemies while his Zambatu was covered in flames. Heaven Fan. Sakura blew away her foes with huge gust of wind with her fan. Land Slicer. Hinata sliced through her enemies with her large chakram. Water Arrow. Sasuke shot the bandits with the arrows from his bow. Wood Spear. Shino executed several jabs on his enemies with his spear. Soon enough, all of the bandits in Gato's mansion had been defeated, and Naruto cancelled the transformation. We have to do this again sometime, said Naruto with a grin while the rest smiled and nodded with Shino being stoic as always but Kurama could sense happiness from him. Now let's go and save Fuchan, what's so important about the girl, asked Sasuke. It's because she was banished from her village and we're alike in a way, Naruto went inside while the others were confused by his statement but Sakura and Hinata knew what he was talking about. When Naruto reached the cell, Fu was waiting and became happy when she saw him. You came back, just like you promised. Fu happily hugged him when he opened the cell door. Well I did promise that I'll come back to get you out, Naruto said with a foxy grin, making Fu blush and her heart was racing. Two weeks later, Team 7 and 8 along with Zabuza, Haku, and Fu stood at the now-completed bridge. Fu decided to go with them and got along with Sakura and Hinata especially since they all liked the same boy and Nanabai started to like Naruto much Kurama's shock. Naruto and Inari spent a lot of together that one would mistake them for brothers in all but blood, he take Inari for a ride with his air treks. Zabuza would sometimes spar with him in a kenjutsu match. Naruto gave the ownership rights to Tazuna as he could trust him to manage it for the good of the island. Kiba stubbornly refused to believe that Naruto was the main reason for the village's salvation and thought that it was a fluke. We can't even begin to tell you how much we appreciate your help with the bridge, especially you Naruto. We're really going to miss you all, said Tazuna smiling sadly along with everyone else. 
Do you really have to go Nikon? Can't you stay a little longer? Inari was holding on to Naruto's jacket as he was very attached Naruto and didn't want him to leave. I'm sorry Inari, but it's my duty to serve my village. Don't cry, I have a way of keeping contact with you, Naruto took out a small scroll and gave it to him. This is a special scroll that I made with Fuinjutsu which allows whatever you write to be transferred to the other so we can write to each other at any time, thank you Nikon, Inari smiled happily. So where will you go now Zabuza? asked Kakashi. I've decided to join Kanoha, said Zabuza, to their surprise. Why? asked Karinai with curiosity. Because I'm getting tired of running from Hunter Neens and I don't want to put Haku in any more danger as I actually see her as my own daughter, Haku cried tears of joy at hearing what he said. All right then, we're off. Don't miss us too much, shouted Naruto as he waved goodbye at them. Say to Zuna, have you thought of name for the bridge yet? asked a man. Yes, I decided to name it the Great Naruto Bridge as Naruto means maelstrom and he helped regain our hope and freedom, said Tazuna as they watched their heroes return to their village. After departing from Wave Country, the group were on their way back to the Hidden Leaf Village. Along the way, Hinata, Haku, Sakura and Fu were talking girl stuff and their relationship with Naruto, Anko was poking fun at Kurinai with her supposed secret relationship with Asuma, and Sasuke was brooding as always although he would stare at Naruto intently from time to time. Kiba was busy playing with Akamaru and Shino was walking silently but one could hear a buzz from within his coat. Although it may look like Naruto walking, but he was actually within his mindscape having a talk with Kurama and Chinami while his body was moving on autopilot. This mission was quite a tricky one, don't you think Kuchin? said Naruto. You're right about that Naruto-kun, no one would have expected the mission to end up like that, said Kurama. Indeed, but the good thing is that, the country is now free from the hands of that tyrant forever. This is one of your many milestones in life, said Chinami with a smile. I know, but I can't help but feel that I just gotten some unwanted attention because of the mission, said Naruto with a thoughtful look. You may be right, we'll find out sooner or later said Kurama hugging Naruto from behind. Thanks Kuchin, said Naruto while blushing from the contact. Naratosama, someone is trying to get your attention from outside the mindscape, said Chinami. Okay then, I'll talk to you girls later, Naruto faded from the mindscape and his eyes refocused to see Fu trying to talk to him. Hey Fuchan, what's up? Um, well you see I. Fu trailed off not knowing what to say until she heard Chomei speak to her from her mindscape. Come on Fuchan, you can do it. Just ask him if he could show you around the village when you get there. I was, uh, hoping that you, uh, show me around the village when we get there, asked Fu nervously. Naruto looked her for a moment before smiling brightly, of course, I'd love to. That is if you're okay with it, Fu nodded happily while Chomei was cheering her on, happy at getting to spend time with him too. Hinata and the other girls looked at them with smiling sign they all agreed to share him as well as any other girl that is to truly love him to for who he is. Soon the group finally arrived at the gates of the Hidden Leaf Village, Naruto was tempted to use his bracelet to equip everyone with the air treks were it not for Kurama and Chinami changing his mind. When they reached the gate, Kakashi reported in. Team 7 and 8 returning from a joint mission in Wave Country, acknowledged, but may we ask why there is a missing Nin and a few other unknown ninjas with you, asked Izumo with Kotetsu listening in as well. They have surrendered unconditionally and have no intention of harming the village, said Kurinai. Very well then, you may proceed, said Kotetsu with a nod of approval. With that, the group continued on their way to the Hokage Tower and after knocking on the door and being told to enter, they were now standing in front of the third Hokage as he sat behind his desk with tons of paperwork to which Naruto quirked an eyebrow. Hirozen looked at the group for a few moments before speaking up, by the look of things, there was more to the mission than originally thought, so I'd like to hear your report, Team 7 started by telling of the encounter of the Demon Brothers and Tazuna having lied to them about the mission, continuing the mission and encountering Zabuza. 
Then Team 8 took over and told the Hokage of how Naruto went ahead of them to help Team 7 and defeated Zabuza who was then rescued by Haku, arriving at Wave, Naruto's infiltration of Gato's mansion, the battle at the bridge and the raiding of the mansion. I understand everything so far which leaves me to ask, Hiruzen turned to Zabuza, why do you want to join the Hidden Leaf Village? It's because I've gotten tired of always being on the run from Hunter Nines and that I want to keep my daughter safe, said Zabuza, Haku looked at him with tears in her eyes while the others excluding a few, take a guess, were smiling gently at what they heard. Then you will be put on a two-month probation with ANBU monitoring you while Haku will be assigned to Chunin. Team May 7th leave while Team 8, Kakashi and Fusan remain behind, said Hiruzen. With the said people leaving, Naruto spoke up. Gigi, I was hoping that you would let Fuchan stay with me, but I have a little problem with accommodation and was hoping that you'd help me out, said Naruto with a smirk to which Hiruzen mirrored having caught the hint, then he opened a drawer and tossed a scroll over to the blonde. You will find your new home next to the Hyuga clan's house and I hope you enjoy living there, said Hiruzen with a smile which dropped when he turned to face the stacks of paperwork on the desk which Naruto looked with a quirked eyebrow. Uh Gigi, haven't you found the solution to the paperwork problem yet? asked Naruto. Well if I had then I wouldn't be doing this, said Hiruzen. But the answer to the problem has been there the whole time, I was wondering why you haven't used such an obvious method, then could you tell this obvious method which I haven't noticed, said Hiruzen who was about to stamp a paper. Why don't you use shadow clones? I mean when the copies dispel, the memory and experience is transferred to the original, that's what helped me with my training, Hiruzen dropped the stamp in shock as he thought of what Naruto had just said and it made so much sense that he was asking himself how he could have missed something like that. He started banging his head on the desk while chanting, stupid, Naruto left with the girls laughing at how the Hokage didn't think of using shadow clones. For a Hokage, I'm surprised he didn't think of something so simple, Kurama giggled at Hiruzen banging his head on the table while Chinami was trying not to laugh. Okay girls, let's check out my new residence, said Naruto walking off with Hinata, Haku, Sakura and Fu close behind. Following the directions on the scroll which Hiruzen had given to him, Naruto led the group to where the clan houses are situated until they stopped in front of a large gate. Seeing a blood seal, Naruto bit his thumb and swiped it on the seal, then there was click and the gates opened to reveal mansion ahead of them. Wow, and to think Naruto's father used to live here, said Sakura with Hinata nodding in agreement. Well what are we waiting for? Let's check it out, said Fu excitedly with Chomei feeling the same way. They started to explore the house after Naruto had released another blood seal on the door, since no one was living in the house, the place had become dusty so Naruto summoned his clones to clean up. By the time they were done, they learnt that it has nine bedrooms, kitchen, a hot spring to the girls' joy, library, and a training ground. Afterwards, Naruto took the girls out to eat at Ichiraku's, then Sakura and Hinata went home to rest while he gave Fu and Haku a tour around the village before returning to the mansion to rest for the next day. The next few days, Haku and Fu were officially assigned as ninjas of the Hidden Leaf Village with Haku as a chunin and Fu as a genin. Naruto was walking around the village since the girls were doing their own thing with Tora following them and he had just finished some training with his jutsus. He was strolling through the street until he stopped and turned to face the cardboard box behind him. Okay Kanoamaru, a rectangular rock isn't exactly suitable for stealth so come out of there, said Naruto with an amused look. The box exploded into white smoke and three voices could be heard coughing. You used too much gunpowder, said a male voice, the smoke cleared to reveal Konoamaru along with two other children. Hey Kono, who are these friends of yours? asked Naruto. They're my friends from the academy, this is Moegi and Udon. I told them all about you Nizan, well it's nice to meet the two of you, so what do you want to do? How about you play ninja with us? asked Moegi. Okay, then I'll give you a head start, said Naruto. Okay come on guys. Kanoamaru took with the others close behind. Naruto was about to go after them when he heard someone approach from behind him. 
He turned to see Sakura with Tora in her arms, Tora jumped from her arms and climbed into Naruto's hood and purred softy when he rubbed under her chin. Hi Sakurakin, how did it go with you and the girls? asked Naruto smiling. We had fun training, Hakuchan, Hinatakan and Fuchan went back to their homes, so I thought to walk around a little with Tora, said Sakura happily, so what are you up to? I'm playing ninja with Kono and his friends, I just gave them a head start, wanna join? Nah, I think I'll just watch, Naruto and Sakura then heard a voice cry out and he recognized it to be Kano Amaru, Chinami confirmed it to be so. Naratosama you must hurry to them. They've run into someone and they intend to do them harm, said Chinami with a sense of urgency. Sakurakan, we need to hurry over. Naruto took off with Sakura close behind, they went round a corner and saw Kano Amaru being held in the air by the collar of his shirt by a boy in a black jumpsuit wearing purple war paint, carrying something wrapped in bandages on his back, and a blonde hair girl carrying a large metal fan on her back. You'd better put him down if you want problems, growled Naruto with an intense glare, gaining the attention of everyone around. Narutonii. Kano Amaru and the kids were happy to see him arrive. Not until I give him his punishment, said the boy raising him higher, angering Naruto and Tora was hissing at them more which Sakura noticed and quickly tried to warn them. You should listen to him, for your sakes, said Sakura urgently. And what is a kid and his kitty gonna do to us, said the boy smugly. Naruto disappeared from their sight and reappeared with Mume no Tamanu at the boy's neck with the green flames radiating from the blade and Tora was on the girl's shoulder hissing with her claws coated with chakra much to her shock. She turned to see Kano Amaru standing next to a second blonde along the other children. Do you really want to find out what I can do, said Naruto inching the blade. Closer that the boy could feel the heat of the flames. The boy raised his hands as in surrender and the blonde puffed into smoke to reveal that it was a clone and Tora leapt off the girl's shoulder and climbed back into Naruto's hood. And whoever is in the tree should come out since I can tell you're not from around here, then someone jumped from the tree and landed before them. It was a girl with dark red hair which reached to her neck, she has black rings around her eyes and a red kanji for love in the left side of her forehead, and wears a full bodysuit with t-shirt-like sleeves, and almost full-length leggings, she also has a wide leather band that is worn from her left shoulder to her right hip which carries a large brown gourd at her back and a forehead protector was tied to it. Wow she looks beautiful but I sense a lot of negativity deep within her heart, thought Naruto and saw the girl turn to the boy, who along with the blonde-haired girl looked at her with fear. Kankuru, what do you think you're doing, said the girl coldly. But Gaia I, Kankuru tried to explain but was interrupted by the girl. Shut up or I'll kill you, then she turned to face Naruto, I'd like to apologize for my brother's actions, my name is Gaia of the Sand, my name is Naruto Uzumaki, I guess you guys are here because of the oncoming Chunin exams, said Naruto, Kurinai and Enko had informed them of it a few day ago so as to prepare them for it. Judging by their forehead protectors, they're the hidden sand village, said Chinami, receiving a mental nod of affirmation from the blonde. Yes we are, and I hope to see you there as well, I can tell that you are capable of proving my existence, said Gaia with a sadistic grin which made Kano Amaru and the others hide behind Naruto in fear. Then she left with her team, leaving Naruto to think about her and finding something odd about her when Kurama spoke up. Naruto-kun, that girl is the Jinchuriki of Shikaku, the one-tailed Tanuki, but I sense something strange about her, said Kurama with a worried look. Then she's just like me, but what's so different about her, asked Naruto. That's because Shukakukan is very shy and tends hide behind her sand unless you're someone that she's comfortable with, but I sense insanity and rage from her and it seems to have a serious effect on her host, then will an eye on her during the exams and find out what caused it to happen, thought Naruto receiving nods from his tenants before turning to face the others, are you guys okay? We're fine, thanks for helping us Narutonii, said Kanoamaru happily along with Moegi and Udon. So what do we do now, asked Udon, Naruto thought deeply before getting a proverbial light bulb and smiled at the kids. You guys wanna see something cool, asked Naruto, getting excited nods from the kids, 
then follow me, you two Sakurikan, Naruto walked off with the Sakura and the kids following him, he led them through a forest. Until they came across what looks like a cross section of a swimming pool with two concave ramps both topped by decks facing each other. Narutokun, what is this? asked Sakura, curiously. Well this is what one of my masters would call a halfpipe, my sensei told me of a sport at his time which is called freestyle skateboarding and how people ride gears similar to mine to perform tricks, after hearing about it, my curiosity got the best of me so I had Gigi and Kakashini I help me construct it with their earth jutsu. I often come here to have my own piece of fun, which is why I decided to bring you guys along to watch, said Naruto with a foxy grin. That sounds cool Narutoniai, could you show us, asked Kanoamaru with stars in his eyes. Of course, just watch, Naruto jumped onto one of the decks and channeled chakra to his bracelet and called out, surf the clouds, then the hoverboard appeared next to him. Then he hopped on and launched off the deck, zipping down the ramp to the other side sent himself into the air and performed a 180 degree rotation before descending down the ramp and moving to the other one. He kept doing this until gaining enough speed and air time. Now to bust some moves. Naruto shot up the ramp and started spinning rapidly in the air completing a full 1080 degree rotation, then went into the air again pulled a method air by arching his body back and grabbing the board with his hand, then he did a kick flip then went down and up a ramp again. This time, he grabbed the nose and stuck his legs out in opposite directions along with a backflip, an airwalk. Wow, Narutoniai is so cool, said Moegi with stars in her eyes as they watched Naruto perform his tricks. I'll say, said Udon. I told you, Narutoniai is the best, said Kanoamaru proudly. Sakura simply smiled as she watched Naruto with admiration. Naruto launched himself into the air one more time, then he grabbed the board and performed a handstand with a 360 spin before finally landing on the deck. He dispelled the hoverboard and jumped down to meet Sakura and the kids. So what do you think, pretty cool right? asked Naruto with a foxy grin. That was so cool Narutoniai, can you teach us how to do that? asked Kanoamaru excitedly. That would have to wait until you're trained in balance and honed your reflexes, plus my team and have to get ready for the Chunin exams, okay Nikon, and good luck on the exams. Kanoamaru took off with the others behind him. How about I escort you home Sakurikan, said Naruto, Sakura nodded happily and linked her arm with his as they walked back to the village. After seeing her home, Naruto headed back to the mansion where he had dinner with Haku and Fu before retiring to his room to sleep. As he was about to sleep, he thought about the upcoming exams and grinned in excitement. I bet there are going to be a lot of strong ninjas from different villages, I can't wait to show them what I can do, thought Naruto. True, but we mustn't forget that we have to find out is wrong with Shukakukan and her host, I'm really worried about her, said Kurama. Don't worry Kuchin, we'll definitely help the both of them, it's as you said Naratosuma, there will be strong opponents at the exams, so it would be wise not to underestimate them, said Chinami. True, but that doesn't mean that I can trick them by making myself look weak before giving them a taste of reality, thought Naruto with a mischievous look. Let's go to sleep, good night Kuchin, Chinamakan, good night Narutakun slash Naratosuma, both tenants said before laying down to rest as well. One thing's for sure, it's gonna get wild at the Chunin exams. The next day, Naruto and his team had arrived the building where the Chunin exams is going to take place, so where are we supposed to be? asked Naruto. Kuranizensei told us that we're to go to room 301 on the third floor, said Sakura. Okay then, let's get there before it's too late, they entered the building and ascended the stairs, Along the way they saw several genin team standing before two guards that were blocking a door with the sign, 301. Sakura and Hinata were about to check it out but Naruto held them back. But Naruto, isn't that the entrance to the exam? asked a confused Sakura. Naruto shook his head in the negative, there's more to it than what we're seeing, plus I've counted and the floors we've climbed and this is the second floor so it might be a trick to delay us, said Naruto. 
Hinata activated her Byakugan and looked at the door before nodding in agreement with the blonde and Narutakan is right, there's a genjutsu on the door, if so, then let's keep going up, as they continued climbing, the guard saw them leave and smiled inwardly since they have realized the trick unlike the rest standing before them. Soon they reached their destination and found Karinai standing at the entrance waiting. I glad to see that you've arrived in time, said Karinai with a smile. Well you should expect no less from us, said Naruto with a smirk, we're gonna show the others our strength and become chunin. Where's Enko Sensei? asked Sakura looking around for their other sensei. She's been called for something, but you'll see her later on, said Karinai, all I have to say is good luck in the exams and I'm proud of you no matter what, Naruto gave a thumbs up, Sakura nodded in affirmation and Hinata smiled shyly before they passed through the door. They saw many ninjas around the room with different clothes, gears and forehead protectors with different symbols. I'm guessing that they are from different villages which came to participate in the exams, said Naruto looking at them. True, but I doubt that they could give you any trouble especially with the training you've had with us, said Kurama with Chinami nodding in agreement. And it's thanks to you too and for that I'm truly grateful to have you in my life, thought. Naruto with a smile, Kurama blushed and Chinami smiled happily. Hey, is that Narutakun? Naruto turned to see who had called him and smiled upon seeing a familiar face, Oh Tentenshin, you're participating in the exams too? Yes, along with my team, said Tenten pointing at the two boys behind her. One had black hair in a bowl-cut style and very thick eyebrows, green spandex and orange leg warmers, and he wears bandages around his hands and wrists and his red forehead protector is tied around his waist. Hello, my name is Rock Lee, said the boy. Oh Kami, what the hell are those things? Hairy caterpillars, thought Naruto, on the outside he was putting on a poker face but inwardly he was panicking, Shinami was quivering with fear at the sight and Kurama covered her eyes with her tail so as not to see the eyebrows, even Tora stuck her head deeper into the hood in order not to look at the boy. Naruto looked at the other standing next to Ten Ten. This one has long black hair which is tied in a loose ponytail and wears a khaki shirt with dark brown shorts and wrapped bandages on his right arm and leg. His forehead protector with two straps is worn on his forehead. By the look of his eyes, he must be a member of the Hyuga clan, said Chinami. So he's related to Hinatakan, thought Naruto. This is my teammate, Niji Hyuga, said Ten Ten but the boy didn't respond to which Naruto quirked an eyebrow, then he noticed Niji glaring intently at Hinata who was trying to look away. Why is he glaring at Hinatakan? He'd better not try anything or he's gonna get a one-way ticket on board the Pain Express, thought Naruto, then he turned to Ten Ten, well I wish you guys good luck in the exams, you too, Narutakun, said Ten Ten with a blush. Yash! I can't wait to see the power of your youth in action, said Rock Lee doing a good guy pose, Niji simply looked away. Naruto walked back to his team, they saw Sasuke and his team enter the room. Then Sasuke was hugged from behind by a girl with blonde hair to whom they're familiar with. Sasukakan, I've missed you so much, said Ino, then she saw Sakura coming up to them, you'd better give up forehead, Sasuke's is all mine, well I don't care about him anymore, the one whom I truly love is Naruto, said Sakura. Everyone aside from Naruto and Hinata were shocked upon hearing what she said, they took a glance to see that she was calm instead of sad and wondered why. What do you mean by that, you had always spoken of how Naruto was annoying, asked Ino, Sakura looked at the ground with sadness and guilt before replying. I wasn't truly myself back then, I knew Naruto long before I met you and entered the academy, and he was the one who helped me become my true self which is one of the reasons why I care about him so much, what do you mean by you weren't yourself, asked Shikamaru, not being lazy for once. We can't tell you guys yet as it's an S-ranked secret, said Naruto, this made Sasuke. Shikamaru and Shino look at him with a calculative eye. What does he know that I don't? What kind of secret could it be that it would involve Sakura? Man what a drag. Their thoughts were broken upon hearing someone approach them from behind. You might want to keep your voices down, otherwise everyone here would think that you're fresh from the academy, 
the group turned to see a boy wearing glasses who was approaching them, we weren't that loud, said Kiba. Then you might want to take a look around, they turned to see many ninjas glaring at them, however they quickly turned away in fear. That's strange, they were just glaring at us a few moments ago, so are they acting like they just saw the Shinigami, wondered Ino, what they didn't notice was that Naruto had used a bit of Kurama's killing intent to scare the foreign ninjas. What's your name, it also seems like this isn't the first time that you've taken the exam, asked Sasuke. My name is Kabuto, and yes this happens to be my seventh attempt at the Chunin exams, said Kabuto, Naruto stared at the boy intently. Either the exams is very difficult or this guy is after something else, thought Naruto. You could be right Naruto-sama, for him to have failed must have been on purpose, I'd advise that you remain vigilant around him, said Chinami. I should have guessed that the exams would be so tough, how troublesome, said Shikamaru. Don't give up yet, I can help you guys out with my ninja info cards, said Kabuto, bringing out a stack of cards. I guessing that they contain about other ninjas right? asked Sasuke. That's right, it seems like there are a few ninjas that you want info on, said Kabuto. Gaia of the Desert, Rock Lee and Naruto Uzumaki, everyone wondered why Sasuke was seeking info about him. Rock Lee, mission experience 20 dranks, and 12 cranks. His team leader is Mado Gai, he has high proficiency in taijutsu but the others severely poor, and his teammates are Tenten Higarashi and Niji Hyuga. Next is Gaia of the Sand, mission experience, 8 cranks and 1 brank, his skills are currently unknown, but get this he survived every mission without getting so much as a scratch on him. Lastly Naruto Uzumaki mission experience, 14 dranks, 1 brank and 1 rank. His team leaders are Kurinai Yuhi and Anko Midarashi, he has high proficiency in Kenjutsu, medium proficiency in Ninjutsu, Taijutsu, and a low proficiency in Genjutsu, and his teammates are Sakura Haruno and Hinata Hyuga, said Kabuto, reading out the info off the cards. And they haven't even seen your true power yet, said Kurama. They will be seeing it soon Kuchin, thought Naruto. The rookies quirked an eyebrow at Naruto's stats, thinking if this is truly the boy who graduated with them. Kabuto brought out a card which an illustration of the map of the elemental nations, along with symbols of ninja village including the leaf village and a graph. Leaf, sand, rain, grass, waterfall and sound. From these villages, those ninjas are here to participate for the exams and this is the largest turnout, the sound village is a total mystery as no one knows much about them, Naratosuma, there are three ninjas moving towards your position with hostile intentions, said Chinami. Naruto quickly moved in and grabbed the arm of a young man with dark spiky hair then flipped him over to the ground before blurring away and reappearing with Mumei no Tamanu at the neck of a ninja who was bandaged all over with his left eye visible, a metal gauntlet and a furry cape on his back. Damn, had I taken one step I would have beheaded myself, thought the ninja while sweating from the flames of the blade. You sound ninjas better behave or there will be problems between you and me, said Naruto before twirling the blade and sheathing it. Now I see what the info card meant by high proficiency in Kenjutsu, this troublesome blonde is really becoming a whole different puzzle every time I meet him, thought Shikamaru. Is this really Naruto, and what could have changed Sakura so much, thought Ino as she looked at Naruto and Sakura. From what I've experienced during the wave mission, I can tell that you haven't gone all out yet, just how powerful are you? thought Sasuke furiously. Then there was an explosion of white smoke, then it faded to reveal a man wearing the headband as a scarf, a black trench coat and has two long scars on his face which made him look very intimidating. All right you baby-faced degenerates, pipe down and listen up. I am Ibiki Marino, your proctor as well as your worst enemy, said the man with a sadistic grin. That must be the head of the interrogation and torture sector, he certainly looks like he knows how to do his job and enjoys it, thought Naruto. Now pick a tab with a number on it, it will show you where you will sit, then we will begin with the written test, said Ibiki. Everyone did as he told them were seated at the indicated number, Naruto ended up sitting next to Hinata much to her joy with the paper test placed in front of them face down. 
Before we begin, let us go through the rules. You each start with 10 points, the test has 10 questions, and if you miss one then you lose a point. Second, this is a team test to see if you can hold up to 30 points. And lastly, if anyone is caught cheating, they will have 2 points subtracted, said Ibiki. Just keep it in mind that we have our eyes open to catch anyone who would even try to cheat, said one of the proctors with a smug look which unnerved some of the participants. Also know that if a teammate doesn't answer all the questions correctly or loses all of his, her points, they will fail along with their teammates, this brought shock to all but a few of the Genin teams who had thought of a plan to back their teammates up. Whoa, they practically gave us no way out of this test, thought Naruto. That may be true, however I feel that there may be. Something else behind all of this, said Chinami with a thoughtful look. You might be right, we just have to find out when the test begins, you have approximately one hour to complete the test dot and begin, said Ibiki. When Naruto turned the paper and read through the questions, he was dumbfounded at what he saw. What the, there's way I can solve these problems, each one becomes much more difficult than the other. Only someone like Sekirikan can answer these questions. Hold on, the only way to answer these questions is to cheat without getting caught by the proctors. But I don't have any way of doing that, unlike Hinatakan with her Byakugan or Sasuke with his Sharingan, thought Naruto. Which is why you have us to help you, Naruto-kun, we can provide the answers to the questions, said Kurama with Chinami nodding. Thanks I really appreciate it, thought Naruto happily. Hinata noticed that Naruto had started writing on the paper quickly while Tora just slept in his hood. Kuramasan and Chinamazan must be helping him, thank goodness, thought Hinata as she resumed writing on her own. The others had also gotten the gist of the test as they started to cheat as well. Sound ninjas were using sound waves and rhythm to decipher the answers, Shino was using his bugs to serve as recon, Ten Ten was using strings and mirrors to spy on Naruto's answers while helping Lee as well and Niji was using his Byakugan too, Gaia made an eye out of her sand and using it to spy on the others. Ino used her mind transfer jutsu to possess Sakura and memorize the answers before returning to her body and relaying it to Shikamaru who then used his shadow possession jutsu on Chuji to write the answers. Meanwhile, Ibiki and the other proctors had caught a large number of the genins that tried to cheat and had sent them out, though there are still some left. After 45 minutes, he called out to them. All right, we may now begin with the tenth question, you must know that there are unique rules to this particular question. So try not to let them scare you, said Ibiki smiling darkly. The way he's talking, it sounds like this question could either make or break the game, thought Naruto as he listened to the proctor. First, you have the choice to either answer the question, but if you refuse to do so then you will fail along with your teammates, if that's the case, of course we'll answer, said a random genin with the others muttering in agreement. If so, then you must know that by answering the tenth question incorrectly, you will be banned from ever participating in the Chunin exams hence remaining a genin for life, this brought shock to many of the participants in the examination room. That's a total bull. There are lots of people here that have taken the exam before, said Kiba who had stood up from his seat with Akamaru barking in agreement. Then you're just unlucky to have me in this exam, since I make the rules. You can skip it and come back. Next year if you don't have the guts. Hopefully, you won't see me again by then, Ibiki laughed darkly. This guy's trying to mind games with us, thought Naruto as even Tora had woken up and climbed to his head to listen. Be calm Naruto-sama, this must be the crucial part of the test, said Chinami. Now we begin, anyone who wishes to withdraw should raise their hands, then they can leave, one by one, a genin would raise a hand to drop out and were escorted out the door along with their teams. Now is there anyone else, Ibiki noticed an arm being slowly raised and everyone turned only to be surprised that it belonged to Naruto who raised a fist up into the air. Naruto is actually quitting, which was what everyone thought. I said raise your hand not your, Ibiki was cut off when Naruto brought his fist down on the table, cracking it and stood up to face Ibiki with an intense stare at the surprised proctor. 
if you're trying to get into my head with all of this crap then you might as well give up, I'm never gonna run away nor quit for the sake of achieving my dream which is to become Hokage. This kid is really something, let's see if he won't falter, thought Ibiki, are you sure that you want to take this test, you would remain a genin forever if you answer the question incorrectly, Naruto simply snorted and pointed at his headband, I knew what I signed up for before I became a ninja, as we're supposed to protect our villages with our lives so you're little late to be giving us this crap. Besides, a rank can never define one's true strength, Ibiki looked at the crowd who had looks of fear and hesitation are now sporting looks of confidence. This kid's really something, to be able to invoke confidence upon everyone around him. 78 participants left and none are backing down, Ibiki glanced at the other proctors and received nods of affirmation, if that is your decision, then I have no other choice, than to pass you. Everybody simply sat there in stunned silence until it was broken by Naruto laughing. I get it now, it completely makes sense, said Naruto along with Kurama and Chinami agreeing with him. What do you mean Naruto-kun? asked Sakura. The decision to answer and reject the question was the tenth question, but there's more to it than that so I'll let Scarface explain it, said Naruto. The kid is right, the first nine question was to test your ability to acquire information under the most severe conditions as some of you may have noticed that the questions were so difficult that it was practically demanding you to cheat without getting caught, Ibiki then untied his scarf to reveal scars, burn marks and puncture holes on his head. Information is the most powerful weapon in the world of ninja, and anyone will do anything to get it, oh man, this guy must been through a lot in order to gain information to end up like that, thought Naruto. Tora shifted uncomfortably on his head at the sight of the scars, so he gave Hinata in order to calm her down. Then what did the blondie mean about the tenth question, asked the girl known as Tamari. The tenth question is based on a choice, misinformation is much worse than no information at all, it could lead to the death of your comrades or the destruction of your village. This is what you would have to face as a chunin, in missions everything is decided by a split-second set of choices which could lead to either accomplishment or failure. I hope that you remember this when you become Chunin and I wish you all good luck, said Ibiki who smirking at Naruto who smirked back. Suddenly, a black ball broke through a window and it unraveled to reveal a woman whom looked familiar to Naruto and his team. Alright kids, this is no time to relax just yet, she shouted. A banner was written with, the sexy and soon-to-be-married Anko Mitarashi. I am the second examiner of the exam, now follow me if you're ready for the second test. Naruto covered his face so as to hide his embarrassment while Sakura and Hinata smiled weakly. Ibiki peeked out from behind the banner. Anko you're early, again, the Kunoichi blushed in embarrassment as well. You let 78 pass this test. You must be losing your touch, said Anko. This group is an interesting one, especially a certain blonde, Anko saw Naruto smiling at her and smiled back with small blush something the other girls noticed as well before looking serious, all right, but by the time I'm through with them, half will be eliminated. I'll let your team leaders know where you should meet so you're dismissed, as they left the hall, Sakura spoke up. Naruto, what do you think the will be like? I don't know but what I do know is that it's going to be tougher than the first, said Naruto. Two hope that will be able to pass, said Hinata, then she and Sakura were hugged by Naruto. As long as we believe in ourselves, of course we'll pass, then they went home to rest and prepare for the next phase of the Chunin exams. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to like and subscribe, and don't forget to share this video with your friends. Guys, make sure to help the author by visiting the link in the description. This is Fox Sage, and I'm signing off.